let's have some fun with the Photoshop AI. And I want to tell you one thing. I did some more experimentation without painting, within painting, and it can be a really beautiful process, but at the same time, it can be so frustrating to get the results because it has a strange combination of giving you very much control with all the powerful tools you have in Photoshop, and then at the same time giving you almost no control over what the AI is doing because there's just no settings, there's just a generate button. But let's have a look at the examples I created for you. In the first example, this is mainly about outpainting. And for these, I'm using mid journey images because in mid journey, you have the least control over editing the image afterwards with your AI. There's just no tools for that. So here you can see that I am selecting the image and then I am inverting the selection to create an outpainting for that. And the very interesting thing about the Photoshop AI is that it analyzes the style and often understands it quite well. Although at the same time, I very often see that the content it creates with this doesn't really make too much sense, doesn't really follow the concept of the art style, but it kind of gets close. So there is still a lot of training needed for this to get better. Now, here you can see that I'm also extending the image on the top. And again, it is following very nicely with the perspective. So that is a good thing here. But at the same time, the details, nah, they don't make too much sense. This is why afterwards I go into the neural filter, which will analyze the depth of the image. And there you can create some beautiful background bokeh for the image. So with that, I can hide a little bit in that image that the background is not actually as good as it might seem. So let's go to the second example here. Again, I have an image from Mid Journey here. We have a bird's eye view of a city at night. I'm creating here different elements in that image, trying to also balance it out, trying to also change a little bit the urban structure in that image. So you can see that I'm adding some neon signs here, but also, I'm creating a park with a water fountain or a little lake in there and then also creating on the left side to balance it out another park that has a little bit of a statue or at least art element in the middle. A next element here to give another interesting detail is to create a silhouette of an helicopter and it's creating different types of helicopters. Some are too big, some are too small. So you have to make the selection the size you want it to be. And also I'm creating a stadium in the background. So this cityscape is becoming more interesting with all these different elements that I'm adding. And also it's freeing up a little bit of the space so you can just look deeper into the city. Throughout the process, I'm also trying to create other elements here. Like for example, on the left side, I wanted to create a waterfront, but for some reason it created some people for me. I wanted to create some light beams that are going into the sky. Also that didn't work. So I decided on creating creating another neon sign on the right side to have a little bit more balance and also add some more color. And then in this case, I went into the camera raw filter, which is very similar to what you can do in Lightroom and do some more adjustments simply to give this more contrast and balance the colors a little bit more. Now here is the last example where I have a ferry and the first part extending the background without a prompt even was very simple to do. I'm very surprised how from that very little background information that uh, Photoshop has, it can really create that beautiful bokeh background with these flying sparks. Now the next part creating these butterfly wings was really frustrating because you have zero control over what these wings are going to look like. I tried to copy the one wing over to the right side to get a similar shape because as you can see here, this is a very, very nice butterfly wing that has this kind of round tip at the end. And I wanted to have that at the right side too and thought when I copy that over, the AI is picking up on that and then creating a wing like that. But no matter what I did here, it just didn't work. So I went 
with another strategy and thought, okay, I have now this other wing, which looks kind of good and is bigger than the original wing. So let's try to create something like that on the right side because this is less specific. But again, it just would not take. I would not get a similar wing or even an overlapping wing that is going out of the bounds of the image. So at some point, I just gave up. That is certainly frustrating because these two wings are simply different kind of butterfly wings. They don't fit together. Now, again, I'm going into the depth blur filter that uses AI so I can blur the background a little bit more, give more attention to the fairy in the foreground. And then also, again, I'm doing some camera raw adjustments here to get a little bit more control over the colors, over the contrast and dehaze the image a little bit to make it just pop more. So my opinion on all of this is that it is a really cool tool that is very impressive that it understands the different styles and can recreate them. But at the same time, it's just missing out on precision. And it also massively fails on giving us the tools to have control over the AI. It doesn't have control net. It doesn't have denoise setting. It doesn't have image to image. So we can give examples to the AI guided in the way we want to have the image. And that just looks loses a lot of time, loses a lot of control, and you can't just follow your artistic idea with this. So for now, of course, it's a beta. It is just good for playing around with it. But I can really see this being a very powerful tool in the future when they add just more control elements, control functions to that AI. Let me know what you think about this in the comments. Thanks for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Bye. Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah.